In this video I'm going to talk about how the circuits work on an Otis carriage selector. It would be great if this video was as entertaining as when a three year old Mr. Che imagined mummy was on fire and tried to put her out with a hose. Or as funny as when I wasn't paying attention and fell down our steps. But firstly, roll the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che intro. So here you have it, it's an Otis carriage selector. It's not funny and it's not that entertaining. However, this is an interesting piece of engineering and I'll make it as interesting as watching a piece of old lift machinery can get. You might like to watch my previous video to know the basics about what this does. See the video description for a link. The front of the selector cabinet has the platform and the spinning disc, but the bit I want to talk about is the carriage on the back. Let's start by constructing the unit piece by piece. These are the floor bars, one for each floor. Each bar has a switch on the left and contacts on the right. Each has a particular function. UHC means uphaul call, DHC means downhaul call. These are the call buttons on the landings that you press to call the lift. The car contacts are the floor buttons that you press inside the lift. These stop contacts go live when a call is picked up by the carriage to slow the lift down and the floor display contacts are connected to the lamps inside the lift and on the landings that show the position of the lift. Just as an example, people inside the lift have pressed the first, third and fourth floor buttons. There are people waiting for the lift on the first and second floors to go up and there are also people on the top floor and the first floor that want to go down. These floor bars do absolutely nothing without a carriage. The carriage goes up and down and touches all these contacts. It's attached to a chain. The overall picture is the lift car is attached to this separate cable. When the lift moves, it moves a smaller scaled version of the lift in the shaft. Actually, Otis don't use a cable for the selector. This is selector tape. These wheels have teeth that line up with the holes in the tape so it cannot slip. These are the main cables that are attached from the lift car round the drive sheave and then back down to the counterweight. Alongside is the floor selector wheel. This wheel joins onto the selector at the bottom. When it turns it moves the chain. Then the chain drives the carriage. On the carriage are brushes. I've drawn these as coloured circles. These are designed to touch the contacts on the floor rails as it moves up and down. The up, down and car call contacts use two brushes, one high and one low. This is so that the brushes get to the floor before any of the others to slow the lift down before it arrives at the floor. These brushes need wires attached to them. The wires move up and down with the carriage and terminate into the connection block at the side. The connector block doesn't actually move, but it would have taken a lot longer to do this animation without it moving. Let's go back to basics about circuits. A circuit is something that starts and ends in the same place. For example, this is the path used by the floor indicator bulbs. As the carriage goes up, the path is changed to light the next bulb. To light a bulb, a ring has to be formed. Here the ring comes from the controller to the carriage, then down to the floor displays, represented here by a single bulb, then back to the controller. So now you can see what the brushes and contacts do. Now the car call buttons. This one is on the third floor for the uphaul call. There are a number of reasons why a circuit cannot be formed here. One of the reasons is because the lift isn't at the third floor. When it gets there, the brush will touch the contact. Here are the three call button circuits, but for illustration purposes, I'm going to concentrate on just the downhaul call circuit. When I made this diagram, I overlooked the fact that the carriage would have to come up to get a down call. Not the best scenario to work with, but providing there are no calls further up, then this will work fine. Let's get this circuit linked up. Here is the path. Power comes from the controller. A downhaul call must be active. This will make the contact live. But which way is the lift traveling? If it's going up, then a circuit is not formed. But let's conveniently say that the lift is going down. 
That's it, our circuit is formed and the lift will now slow down to get the people waiting on the third floor. But I can hear you all shouting, Oi Matt, what's inside the controller? Here is a very clean Otis motor room. On the front are 74 small type relays at the top with around 12 higher power relays at the bottom. So that's nearly 100 relays. But this doesn't count the call buttons, so add another 50 to that. So let's make our own simple controller using only a couple of relays to give you a flavour of how a relay controller works. We need a power source and a relay to start with. If we connect it up then we have the possibility of a circuit. We need a downhaul call active on the third floor, the lift must be arriving at the floor and the lift must be prepared to receive a down call and we have a circuit. In this case it's going to slow down. And yep, that relay turns on. But what good is that relay unless something is connected to the switches? Because that's what a relay is. It's an electromagnet that moves switches. How about we connect the first switch of the relay to the stop contacts? We need this else the lift will not stop. Now when the relay turns on, the stop contacts become live. Although the stop contacts are now live, there is no circuit back to the controller yet. Our second relay is connected to the stop brush and there is the stop circuit but there is no circuit because the carriage brush hasn't reached the stop contact yet. We now have two circuits. Press the downhaul call on the third floor. The lift is ready to receive the down call. It comes up and the carriage brush touches a live call which completes the circuit and activates our first relay. This switches power to the stop contacts and when the lift is level with the floor the second circuit is completed and the second relay turns on. Now a stop command would be an idea. And what about the high and low speed? We also need a separate higher voltage supply for the motor. Now 415 volts is not a DC voltage and it's not drawn like this. But this is just for simple illustration purposes only. The first relay has two switches. Let's use the second set of contacts to control the motor speed. But this is not a circuit unless it forms a ring, like this. Let's start the lift. When the down call is found, the first relay now does two things. It switches the motor to low speed and livens up the stop contacts. When the lift is level with the floor, the stop circuit is formed activating the second relay. And what does this do? It cuts the motor circuit and the lift stops. Now you cannot run a lift system using just two relays. You would need loads more than this, like one to reset the call buttons, open the doors, a door open timer relay, one to reset the motor sequence, and it goes on until you reach about 150 relays to make the system fully automatic. We've been concentrating on the third floor circuits, but don't forget that the other floor rails have wires too. So the more floors you have, the more wires and circuits are required. Now the floor rail circuit logic. Someone gets into the lift and presses the fourth floor. The lift has to work out which way to travel, which I will explain in a moment. Whenever the lift is going up, the UHC brush is active waiting to find a live UHC contact on the way up. The DHC brush is not active because the lift is going up, not down. It will be a waste of time stopping to collect people that want to travel in the opposite direction. The car call brush is always active, as these are the floor buttons inside the lift for the passengers. If one is active, then the lift will stop whether it is going up or down. So here are the three circuits for the third floor. So let's send the lift up to the 4th floor with no calls active on the 3rd floor. Pausing the animation, there is no circuit made by the UHC, DHC or the car call. So the lift passes the 3rd floor without stopping. What about if there was a DHC on the 3rd floor? This would make the DHC contact live. Don't forget this is the down button on the 3rd floor but the lift doesn't stop because the DHC brush is not live. The lift is going up to the fourth floor, not down. What if there was an up call on the third floor? Well, you can probably see that a live brush is going to touch a live contact here, so let's draw in the stop circuit as well. The lift goes up, 
live brush touches live contact and the lift is going to stop. So now the slowdown sequence is activated. This livens up the stop contact. The lift switches to slow speed and when the stop contact is made, the lift stops level with the floor. It's important that the floor rail is positioned in the right place. If the lift is not level with the floor, it can be adjusted by sliding the rail up or down so the lift stops sooner or later. Now we come to how the lift knows which way to go to collect a call. It's all about trying to draw a line, then connecting the lift into the line. Let's get really simple here and concentrate on the car calls only. These all connect to the line. At the top of the line is a request for the lift to go up. At the bottom of the line is a request for the lift to go down. If I place a car cord above the lift, then the line on its own is no good. The voltage just goes both ways and the lift is requested to go up and down, absolutely no use. What we need to do is cut the line. This is where the floor direction switch is coming, to break the line. Each floor bar has a switch. The carriage has a kind of ramp on it that moves these switches apart. So each switch can now break the line. If we look at them in a little more detail, this is how they are connected together. This line is no longer straight, but it doesn't matter, it still starts at the top and finishes at the bottom. When the carriage moves through them, it breaks each switch one at a time, like this. Here you can see the floor bar for the top floor. See if you can spot the switch being opened. If you missed it, here it is. If the lift is not at the floor, the contacts join together. Here the fourth floor car call can now reach only the up request relay. At the third floor, the lift is not here, so the line joins together. The carriage is at the second floor, so this breaks the line. Now you can see that the car call that's above the lift can only reach the up request and cannot get to the down request. Now when a lift gets a request, it will always commit to this direction until it reaches the furthest call. Talking of which, now let's draw in the remaining call buttons. Here is how the up call buttons and the down call buttons connect to the line. So now up goes the lift and up goes the carriage. As the carriage passes the floor, the edge switch cuts the line. Look what happens when the fourth floor edge switch is broken. It prevents the car call reaching the up request and there are no other calls to keep it active. This is how the lift knows that it's reached the last call in this direction. It's now open to a direction change. I will now add some example calls. Up on the first floor, down on the second floor and up on the third floor. Each of these calls keeps the down request circuit alive. When the door closes, the lift now commits to the down direction until the last call is reached. The up brush is not active and the lift doesn't stop on the third floor. Ah, the carriage has found a DHC. Stopping sequence has now been initiated and the car slows down to stop. In a real situation, a person will probably get in and push the ground floor, probably to leave the building. This keeps the down request alive until the lift reaches the bottom of the shaft. What about if the last call was an up? How is a live down brush going to touch a live up contact? Look how the up and down hall calls are connected to the line. The up calls are connected above the switch and the down calls are connected below the switch. Let's continue the animation. When the carriage reaches the floor switch it breaks the circuit. It's the last call. Now look what happens to the electrical circuit now the switch has been cut. This allows the brushes to change from down to up. Amazing and now the up brush can make contact with the up call contact which now starts the slowdown sequence. And then the lift arrives on the first floor and it is now going up. There's not really much more to tell you regarding the carriage, but in the next video I will be starting to explain each of these relays. Like that was a joke. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and stand by for a shorter explosive movie that explains how the express circuit logic works. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video 